He was a towering figure, a fingerstyle master whose complex syncopations have influenced guitar players across three generations, a preacher in song who wrote spirituals that ring out with pain and power and faith, a teacher and mentor who preserved the musical roots of his own era and bequeathed them to ours. Gary Davis was born in the spring of 1896 and raised on a South Carolina farm. He was blind from early infancy, so he listened. Listened to the music of the streets. Listened to the music of the church. And when he was seven years old, he taught himself to play the guitar. My mother said, that boy going to be a musician. I said, I'm going to buy him a guitar. I was seven years old. She bought me a guitar. And it laid around the house about, about, about a week. She, she went to work that morning, left me with the guitar, come back that morning, I was eating that guitar up. It just stayed around home a week. And I've been playing ever since. That's right. At the age of 16, he moved to Greenville. He joined a string band, played blues and ragtime on street corners, and practiced his skills. In 1927, Gary Davis moved to Durham, North Carolina. By then, he was a full-time street musician, and by then, he was also celebrated up and down the eastern seaboard as a player in the Piedmont style equaled only by a few. Legends like Blind Lemon Jefferson and Blind Blake. It was in Durham that he met Blind Boy Fuller, with whom he later traveled to New York in the studios of the American Record Company. Though he laid down 15 tracks, he was paid little more than his expenses. It would be almost 20 years before Gary Davis would enter the studio again. Because he was a man of faith, he had always mixed his blues and ragtime with the church hymns he'd been singing all his life. In the mid-1930s, some say 1933, others 1937, he was ordained a minister in the Baptist Church. From then on, he was the Reverend Gary Davis, and his repertoire was music of the spirit. As a young man, Gary Davis had met and left a woman who had cheated on him. In 1937, he married Annie Wright, who shared his strength and his religion. Together, they moved to New York, first to Long Island and then to Harlem, where Gary continued to play street music and became a minister at the Missionary Baptist Connection Church. Once again, he began to record, this time in earnest, for folkways, for prestige, and later for Vanguard. And then came the wave that carried the Reverend Gary Davis from street corner to center stage, the 1950s, the revival of folk music, and the search for authentic connections to its roots. Suddenly, the Reverend Gary Davis was much in demand. He played coffee houses. He toured and performed at festivals, including Newport and Philadelphia. He was seen on television, and finally he began to win the recognition and respect that was long overdue. Though he was well into his 60s when the folk revival began, Reverend Davis's skills were undiminished. He began to attract young players who came uptown to learn the intricacies of Soldier's March and Cincinnati Flow Drag. Students like Ry Cooter, and Taj Mahal and Jerry Garcia. Ooh! 
good God. Though his students and audiences first came to him for his ragtime guitar and his earthy blues singing, he still considered his work to be primarily religious and sang them his sermons. Soon they were calling for his spirituals. There's a destruction in this land, 12 gates to the city, if I had my way. Reached his 70th year, the Reverend Gary Davis, who had grown up blind and poor, was being celebrated here and abroad. He was traveling and preaching and singing. On May 5th, 1972, he was being driven to a performance in New Jersey when he suffered a heart attack. Later that day, he was gone. More than three decades later, and more than 100 years after his birth, his influence still grows as each new generation discovers blues, folk, and other forms of traditional American music, his signature guitar style and heartfelt vocals continue to teach and to move and to entertain. He was authentic. He was powerful. He was pure. Through my word, we're all 